You know, the past couple months have been really unbelievable for the Stinger because number one, I win the tournament. I can't believe all the competition. I still came out on top. Number two, I get put into one of the most elite groups in professional wrestling, the Four Horsemen. I never thought I'd see the day. And now, last but not least, I get the chance to wrestle the world champion one more time, Ric Flair versus Sting. I've talked to the horsemen. They've made me a horseman. There's going to be no qualms with all of us. It's just going to be one heck of a match. And if I win, Rick, you're going to shake my hand. If you win, I'll shake yours. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Jacksonville, Florida, 230 pounds, Rick Fargo. And introducing his opponent, making his way into the ring area, at 270 pounds, from the University of Oklahoma, Dr. Death, Steve Williams. The big doctor, roaring to the ring to take on Rick Fargo. Interesting comments from Steve. He's in a real unique position as he's training to wrestle right now, Rick Flair. And he's also training with Ric Flair every day. As I mentioned, it seems like a conflict of interest. And Ric Fargo trying to seize the moment here on Dr. Death. Perhaps he feels the only way he can beat Dr. Death is to take the early advantage. He landed right on his feet like a big cat. He made a big mistake there. Oh, God almighty, what a close line. Good Lord. Oklahoma could have used him this year in the gridiron. That's a face of competition. And if he can stay focused, Simplify his game plan. Dr. Death. Well, he better than ever. He, the perspiration, he slipped off there. Doc tried to slam him. And I'll tell you what he is. Now, he will not stop until he slams him. He's going to press slam him if he has to. If it takes him all day, which it will not do. That's what I'm saying. He had to do it. He set out to do what he had to do. Look at him extend the arms. Fargo's 245. One, two, three, four. This is amazing. It certainly is, Jim, but it gets back to what you said. If Dr. Death would focus on what he's doing, he'd be knocking on the world's champion's door tomorrow. You made the best remark, I think, since, I think, summarizing his situation last week when you said that he needed leadership. Yes. When you were managing, and I'm not advocating that you become his manager or anything like that, I don't think that probably would be the best thing for Doc or you right now, Kevin. But when he was managed and focused and led, he was a world tag team champion. The only time he's ever been a world's champion was with a manager. So perhaps we can say his greatest success has been with a manager. Does he need one? He says no. He says he doesn't. It remains to be seen. Well, well I heard that one time Barry Switzer said that he's the most coachable player he's ever had. That means that he can take orders. That oh, drop kick. That means that all you have to do is lay out a game plan for Doc and he can execute it. Right. So all Doc needs to do is going is up top. Is he going up top, Kevin? I don't know. I've never seen the Doc fly. It looks like he's added something to his repertoire. The flying, we can call him the flying physician because Dr. Dea just came right off the top rope. And the Doc now, I'll tell you something, he's controlled this one. This one. And I'm not taking anything away from Rick Fargo, who is double tough. Fargo goes to the other side, not missing with that clothesline, but he caught him in midair. Now there's the strength. He missed a move, but he made up for it. He's caught right here, and Fargo is stampeded. The Oklahoma stampede as Dr. Death has not even been tested in 1990. And he stayed focused, Dr. Williams! Fans still to come, the U.S. champion Lex Luger. We'll hear from Flying Brian and the Z-Man, but look at this. This is a patented Dr. Death Oklahoma stampede. Look at the eyes. Look at the eyes. That's intensity. Dr. Death Steve Williams, he's nailing him in 90, and we'll be back with Lex Luger in a moment.